Hey guys, it's Robert back at you with another great video. Alright, today we got a special unboxing. As you can see here, we on the Ottoman, we got a whole bunch of kicker love that we got to get to. But we're just going to do this one item at a time. But you can check the links for the other videos. We've got two of the kicker KXA 400.4s. Um, actually the kicker front row I've actually had for a while now, but we're going to kind of take a quick look at it since I had to pull everything out of the car and this big boy right here. We got the kicker KXA 2400.1 subwoofer amp. So we're actually going to focus on the 2400.1 on this video. So give me one second. All right, y'all, here we go. The Kicker KXA 2400.1. The new model of this amp, as you can see, is now one ohm stable. Now, according to Kicker, that's, that's not necessarily going to give you any more than 2400.1 um, because it's just made to be one ohm stable, not to give you any more magic power. So let's open up the box here and see what we get inside here. So of course, we're going to get a... Our owner's manual and a set of screws and an Allen key and we're gonna need that Allen key here when we get to doing our overview as you can see it comes with some really long mounting screws that's because the depth of the the way that they have the amplifier designed for mounting you're gonna need some really long screws we'll get to that and let's take a quick glance at the owner's manual See if there's anything in here special we need to know. All right, like I said, it is four ohm operation, two ohm or one ohm. And then here we have kicker showing you how to that you can integrate it into any factory radio, including high powered amplified units without an issue. You just simply, and that's all through the RCA cable. And of course we have a wireless base knob with this unit. And just a quick flip through. And nothing, nothing real special there. We'll get to looking at everything and we're going to set our Allen key over there. And this particular amplifier here, birth sheet, as we can see, is 2439 watts certified power. So we just going to. Stick that back up there. Now, I got to tell you guys one thing. This is one of the heaviest amplifiers I've ever actually picked up. I weighed it in the box and it's 13 and a half pounds. Now, granted, you might want to take off a pound or whatever for the box or half a pound, but either way, this is a daggum 13 pound amplifier. That is crazy. So, just in case you're wanting to know, now we got our wireless base knob that comes nice and tucked away into the side then we have our mount and our base knob here so set styrofoam off to the side let's set our mount off to the side and of course we just got a empty box now so let's go ahead and get rid of the box and get a look at the big amplifier itself. All right, as you can see, it's got stop. If you have any issues at all, just make sure you call Kicker, Kicker Technical Support and sure they can assist you. They're pretty smart guys over there. So, as y'all can tell, I have not taken this actually out of the wrapper yet. So we're on this journey together, as usual. Right. So let's, I'm telling y'all, that thing is heavy. It is crazy how heavy this amplifier really is. So let's get it back in the frame here. Now, oh, got some little styrofoam on it. We will see that this amplifier measures right about 15 and a half inches long and looking like about seven and a half or so 
tall. And then depth wise, we're about two, about two and an eighth or something like that. Now, this is why we kept the Allen key out while I have it on this side here is you'll notice this is the end cap to where all your controls are behind. So simply loosen these two screws up. They actually have them designed in a way that you should not be able to lose them, but I'm sure if you tried hard enough, you could. So just gently loosen them, give it a pull with your fingernail, and then the cover will come open and the cover actually stays attached as it is hinged, which is a really good thing. So that way we don't, hopefully, five, two or three, five years from now, a bunch of these amps used on the market with out their cover. So as we can see here, We've got our gain control, which is really, really nice because the gain control here will actually has a light on it when you're setting the gain. When the light comes on, you back off the gain just a little bit, and it saves you from having to buy an oscilloscope or a DD1 to set the gains properly. It's actually got it built in. Then we have our subwoofer subsonic filter, a continuously variable adjustable between 10 and 60 hertz. I don't have my glasses on guys. Sorry. And then we have our low pass filter, which is a continuously variable between 40 and 160. And then we have an adjustable bass boost, which is a variable center frequency. So we can, um, and that's continuously variable. So we can either boost 20 hertz or turn it all the way up to, looks like to me, 50 hertz. And, and then of course we have um, the band width so we can choose how much of the band that we want to boost. So if we have a narrow bandwidth, it's only gonna boost 20 Hertz only. If we have a wider bandwidth, it's gonna boost out frequencies um, lower and higher than 20 Hertz like this. Okay, now what else you got? And then we have our base boost zero to 18. DB, which of course we all know that really shouldn't be using bass boost, but you can use bass boost, but you have you if you use your bass boost and you turn bass boost up, you're probably gonna have you're gonna have to back off your gain just a little bit to compensate for the clipping that you're gonna get into. So now let's take a look at what we get here with the wireless bass knob. Ugh. Let's get it out of the package. Try to. There. Okay, yeah, there we go. You got it taped up pretty good there. All right, so let's pull this in and get the camera to focus. Nope, focus. And file language in the background. I oh, know. Anyway, so here's our wireless amplifier controller here it comes with the flush mount ring so that you can actually flush mount the amplifier i mean flush mount the bass boost controller in the dash or you can just walk around with it like this here and you see we got remote gain then we got our shock which is kickers um low frequency enhancer kind of like the audio control epicenter to where if you play music that doesn't have a whole lot of bass like old um, 80s style rock and stuff like that and you can turn that up and give it some bass and we actually have our phase controller it's actually zero it's actually just zero to 180 it's not continuously variable and then of course we have our clip indicator and that is all done wirelessly to pair the To pair the remote with the amplifier, all you simply have to do is on the amplifier itself, there will be a button right here above the green light that will actually put the amplifier in pairing mode here and it will flash and then it will automatically detect the bass knob and you're good to go there. So, yep. And then of course we have our protective cover. Oh, okay. The logo, they actually give it freely. 
So that way, if you're gonna mount it upward, you can have with your power connections facing back, we can have the logo up, or we can flip it around and mount the amplifier like this with the logo like so. So I, I love that touch because not every installation is the same. And so let's go ahead and just move this out of the way and make sure I don't lose that. Now that probably on the used market, there will be some kicker amplifiers without their logo, without their power and ground inputs on this um, big boy. So we can see here, it's got one alt power what appears to be about an 8 gauge remote consumer remote turn on. One alt gauge ground. We have our auto turn on circuit. 12 EDC switch is going to be for using a remote turn on. DC is going to be your DC offset, which is for use for factory integration. And that's going to be an instance where if your factory radio has the three to about the three volt um, power that runs along the speaker wire. You actually have to use that so your factory radio remains working and we'll use that to turn the amplifier on. Now we've also got, um, oh shoot, audio turn on, which is basically voltage sensing. Anytime that any voltage is detected through the RCA inputs, the amplifier will automatically cut on that way. And then of course we have an RCA output as well. Now, if you're using any of the radio detect features, there is this button here that you will have to push in. It will go recessed into the amplifier and then push it out for just using your standard remote turn on. Then over here on this side, we've got what appears to be about eight gauge speaker wires. We have positive, positive, negative, negative. And it doesn't matter which positive or which negative you use, they all go to the same thing. So that's gonna really about cover it for the kicker kxa 2400.1 guys give me one second here and i'm going to try to do something special on this video so we'll be right back with you all right guys told you i was going to try to do something a little special for y'all okay a bunch of daggum screws to get the bottom plate off of this amplifier is one two three four five six seven then there was another three, four, five, six across the front. And if you do it, we're just gonna slide the cover this way and slide it up and off. And there we go. Oh man, look at that. There's a gut shot. There's your gut shot, guys, right there. But anyway, so here's what we're looking at. We got the, this is interesting. Uh, this is actually going to be cooling. Looks like a cooling plate for the uh, output devices. Then our side panel pieces do light up. This is wires going to the LED for KX. That's written on the side of the unit. We got some massive turboids here. And we've got plenty, it looks like, let's see here. We've got USCON 22 microfarad, 80 volts. I can't see, make out the temperature rating. 105 degrees, so this is, these are the good caps. And yeah, that's about it guys. I'll bring it up here so we can kind of get a overview of it. Uh, this is a, I told y'all this amplifier is heavy, so y'all bear with me. And there's your gut shot of the Kicker KX 2400.1. And if you guys have any questions or issues that you'd like to know, please just leave a comment down below. And to check out the other videos, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to put this 
big boy back together and then I'm going to unbox a four channel KXA 400.1 and I'll leave a link to that video in the description of this video. Alright, catch you guys in the next one.